The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, Breakout Investing, with your host, Ken Shreve. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another edition of uh, Breakout Investing. Very busy day of headlines for the stock market. Of course, we'll get into them a little bit um later. Uh, let me tell you the phone number to use if you want to talk to me. That would be 877-927-6648. Uh, you can catch my show daily on TFNN from 3 to 4 Eastern. You can also get my show as a podcast on iTunes if you uh, can't, um, can't listen live. And don't forget, you can listen to all TFNN programming on your smartphone. Just plug those earbuds in, open up your smartphone browser, type in tfnn.mobi, and you can listen to the stream that way as well. If you want to look at charts live as I'm talking about them on the show, be sure to use Tiger TV right on the homepage of tfnn.com. Channel 1, the show is carried live. It is archived in Channel 13. And uh, Tiger TV is also viewable on your handheld device as well. All right, let's take a look at the NASDAQ composite here. Uh, trading near its session low again. Uh, we're looking at uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday closes, or at least Monday and Tuesday closes near lows after uh, early strength. That looks to be the case uh, again today. We'll see if we can muster some sort of uh, rally into the close here. But uh, NASDAQ looking a little bit heavy here down uh, a uh, almost two points. Uh, not much uh, movement uh, last at uh, 3,102. Let's look at a weekly chart for the NASDAQ composite. And uh, again, as I've been talking about, you know, it's been a, a pretty strong move up for the NASDAQ as it builds the right side of its base here. You know, a pullback down to the 10-week moving average at 3,023. 3,023. That's less than 100 points. And, you know, it might seem like a, you know, 70, 80-point decline from here uh, is a lot. And, you know, percentage-wise, it's not that bad. But a pullback to the 10-week moving average uh, would be uh, perfectly normal here. So I'm not uh, ruling out uh, that possibility. Uh, Apple really can't get out of its own way today. It's been a pretty volatile day of uh, trading for the uh, tech bellwether. Uh, we'll touch on Apple in a little bit, uh, in a little bit. but uh, NASDAQ looking a little heavy here. We'll see what the Fed has to say tomorrow at the conclusion of its uh, two-day Fed meeting. The jobs report on Friday certainly heightened the odds that uh, we, we will see some sort of QE3 from the Fed uh, tomorrow. But uh, as I've been saying, it's not, uh, it's not a sure thing. So if the Fed says, well, we're not going to act now, but uh, we will later in the year, uh, who knows what they're going to say. But uh, you know, it's going to be tough to, to see how the market is going to respond uh, if, uh, if they get that sort of statement from the Fed. But um, the consensus seems to be that we're going to get... Um, something, but at least for the NASDAQ a composite, just uh, down moderately today. Uh, volume tracking about 5 to 10 percent higher than what we saw yesterday, 1.57 billion shares uh, for the NASDAQ on Tuesday. Uh, if volume stays the way it is, we could see probably in the area of 1.7 billion on the uh, NASDAQ, which would be just slightly above average. Um, let's take a look at the S&P 500 now. S&P 500 large cap index. It is uh, up a fraction, still holding near highs, not doing much of anything. Also near its uh, session low after hitting an intraday high of 14.39. Uh, and so just uh, just up uh, up a fraction. We could take a look at a uh, weekly chart for the uh, S&P 500 here. There it is. S&P 500. So still holding above its uh, breakout, but the S&P is the same situation as the NASDAQ composite. After a big run up off the uh, bottom, a pullback down to that 1400 level, 1401 wouldn't be uh, surprising at all. So if the market comes in a little bit, it doesn't mean that a bear market is uh, is upon us. We have to keep in mind that stocks have been uh, running higher for a while. Hopefully you've got some some cushions in stocks that you can afford to sit through uh, sit through a, a pullback. So you know where the market it goes from here will be predicated on what the uh, Fed has to say on 
uh, on Thursday uh, tomorrow. Uh, folks, wanted to let you know about the uh, Tiger Dollar promotion uh, going on up until September 16th. And uh, Tiger Dollars are, uh, are very popular. Uh, a chance to make 20 to 30 percent on your money. You can uh, purchase uh, Tiger Dollars uh, to buy uh, anything on the TFNN uh, website. And uh, if you uh, take advantage of this offer before September 16th, you'll get uh, free access uh, to a live uh, workshop with uh, Tom O'Brien, Friday, October 5th from 8 to 1 uh, Eastern. And uh, that's going to be a live, uh, you know, live, uh, live trading. So uh, purchase Tiger Dollars before September 16th, and uh, you get uh, get some free money. Tiger Dollars are always going on at TFNN.com, but before 16th, you get a bigger match on your money. So get all the details uh, right at TFNN.com. So, uh, yeah, another kind of wishy-washy day in the market here. Let's check in on shares of uh, Apple. The uh, story with uh, Apple, they did announce the new iPhone 5 today. Uh, it's been just trading all over the place. Its price action definitely has been squirrely lately. I mean, a uh, pretty bearish day for the stock on Monday. More selling Tuesday, more selling today. And volume has been getting heavier and heavier. So that's, uh, that's a concern. I've decided to uh, hold on to the uh, position for now for the Ultimate Growth Stocks uh, model portfolio. Just uh, uh, be patient with it, but uh, it's underselling pressure again. Uh, you know, if Apple is uh, looking heavy, chances are the NASDAQ Composite is looking uh, heavy as well. But uh, details of the iPhone 5, larger screen, it's uh, lighter, thinner, made entirely of glass and aluminum, so that's uh, interesting, and lower price points as well. Uh, anywhere from $199 to $299 to $399. The phone ships September 21st. Apple also introduced... Um, a seventh generation iPod uh, Nano with a uh, two and a half inch screen, very thin, 5.4 millimeters uh, thick, has a touch screen, uh, video, and an FM tuner. So uh, Apple is uh, selling the news. It seemed like an easy call that uh, Apple would sell the news, but uh, it's, it's doing it today, so we'll see where the stock uh, ends today. It's down $3.22 to six fifty seven thirty seven. Uh, taking a look at shares of uh, Google, looking a lot like uh, Apple here. Google uh, also down for three days in a row. Some some profit taking here. I don't think the fundamental picture has changed at all for Apple and, and Google. The, the stocks just frankly have been running higher for a while. So uh, normal uh, consolidation here. In fact, um, well, Google right now down another four dollars and sixty nine cents today to six eighty seven uh, fifty. And you know, I did want to look at weekly charts for, for Google and Apple uh, because it does provide good perspective. Let's start with Google first. Again, this is a situation where if you don't own the stock yet, it's a strong stock. I think overall the market continues to look okay here. We could come in a little bit. Again, NASDAQ, S&P 500 could come down to their 10-day moving averages, just like Apple, uh, Google, I should say, could come down to its 10-week moving average at around uh, 654. So that's uh, you know about another 30 points or so before it gets to that uh, support level. And uh, same thing with, uh, with Apple. Uh, Apple II. After a, a big uh, price run, we look at Apple's weekly chart, see its 10-week uh, moving average right around 633, 634 uh, in that area. So uh, pullbacks to these support levels, uh, what's important to keep in mind is that very, very strong institutional quality stocks. There are a lot of them out there that continue to look very good uh, technically. Uh, Apple, Google, uh, you name it. After uh, an extended period of strength, uh, pullbacks to the 10-week moving average are uh, normal. And frankly, the strongest stocks do tend to find support at that, uh, at that level, which is why when I use weekly charts on the show, I always have the 10-week the moving average, um, 10-week moving average uh, on there. Good day for the uh, home builders today. Let's take a look at uh, the iShares Dow Jones U.S. Home Construction Index Fund. This is one that I let go a little bit early. Very, very extended here after a recent breakout over 17. It's uh, trading around 19.23, up another 2.2% today, holding uh, near highs. So uh, ITB acting well. Top holdings of the 
uh, ITB, uh, DR Horton, that would be ticker DHI. We'll see that um, uh, this stock is outperforming today up um, 1%, a little more than 1% to $20.53. Uh, story here is that it's uh, look it's starting to get a little extended uh, after breaking out over a buy point of 1935. So borderline extended here. Uh, also Pulte Group, another top holding of the ITB. Uh, Pulte Group uh, outperforming nicely today. This has been a monster performer, but also very, very extended here. Uh, up 89 cents today, a little more than 6% to 15.56. Uh, last breakout for uh, Pulte Group was when it broke out over uh, $10.82. That was um, back in late uh, late July uh, thereabouts. So uh, home builders are uh, still, still working here. I'd be careful about uh, chasing them. Again, uh, just that, that um, you know, typical warning I give about buying stocks that are too extended in price. Um, you don't want to buy extended uh, growth stocks. Take a look at shares of uh, Facebook today. Facebook uh, having a good day. I was very interested in listening to uh, Mark Zuckerberg speak uh, yesterday at TechCrunch. Uh, here's a guy who's not out in the media uh, very often, but uh, very uh, smart, well-spoken. A lot of people questioning whether or not he's the best person for the CEO job at, at Facebook. But he was very, um, I don't know if self-effacing is the right word, but he did acknowledge uh, mistakes, maybe concentrating too much on uh, Facebook on the computer as opposed to Facebook and, and mobile. Uh, with mobile really being the, the thing of the future. So they're a little behind there, but they're working to, um, to establish a, a, mo a, a better mobile pres presence and a more profitable uh, mobile presence. So overall, I thought his... Um talk yesterday was positive. Stock is uh, reacting well uh, as well, up close to 7% today to 2077. Still think this is a broken stock, and uh, Facebook is definitely going to have to uh, prove itself to uh, Wall Street. But all in all, uh, Mark Zuckerberg's uh, talk uh, yesterday was, uh, was, was pretty po positive, and I was impressed with uh, um, you know, he, he told it. He told it like it was. Um, recent data from eMarketer. This is a research firm uh, really expecting big growth in the mobile ad revenue market. Uh, this year is supposed to be about $2.61 billion. Uh, by the end of 2014, uh, they're looking at ad revenue of $6.6 .6 billion. And by the end of 2016, almost double that to $12 billion. So, um, you know, you can see why mobile is the focus right now for uh, Facebook, whether it's going to be able to uh, succeed, uh, remains to be uh, remains to be seen. There are you know plenty of people that believe in Zuckerberg and and Facebook, and uh, it could happen. It's just going to be a it's going to be a long uh, long road and and uh, a tough uh, environment to execute in. Uh, take a look at uh, the street TST. Interesting. Um, company that uh, I still contribute for. Uh, news of an ac acquisition didn't help the stock uh, that much. Uh, st shares down a penny to a dollar 39. The company said Wednesday it closed its acquisition of uh, magazine The Deal. It's a media company uh, that covers the uh, M&A market, uh, merger and acquisition. Um, TST bought The Deal from a pri from private equity firm Wasserstein and company terms weren't uh, disclosed. Uh, the deal boasts an institutional customer base of 40,000 subscribers, senior level bankers, private equity partners, hedge fund managers, uh, and the like. So news of that acquisition not helping the street uh, very much today down a penny to a dollar thirty-nine as this uh, company tries to return to profitability and top line growth. We'll see if they can do it. All right, folks, head into our first break. We'll be right back. Break out investing on TFNN. Stick with me. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kay Stalter, David White, Larry Pesamento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. 
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Quick check on the U.S. dollar index. Down another 15 ticks today to 79.71. The greenback uh, closed yesterday at 79.86. Uh, still you know, stuck underneath its 200-day uh, moving average here. Probably getting pretty close to some longer-term uh, support levels, but uh, dollar still weak here ahead of the uh, Fed statement uh, tomorrow. The yield on the 10-year note, 1.75%. Uh, they're about 30-year, 2.91%. And uh, let's check in on that FXE, that uh, currency shares Euro Trust, which basically tracks the price of the uh, Europe. It uh, closed just underneath its 200-day uh, moving average. Uh, hasn't faced resistance there yet. It's actually trading above the line now. 200-day moving average for the FXE is at 127.91. The FXE right now trading at 128.14. So buyers continue to uh, come into the euro here in uh, anticipation or hopeful that Europe is, uh, you know, taking the right steps to fix its. Um, problems uh, over there. Taking a look at uh, gold today, gold for December delivery fell a dollar twenty. 
One tenth of a percent settled at 1733.70 an ounce. We'll check in on the GLD here. GLD right now, after hitting an intraday high of 168.87, it's uh, down near its low. Only down eight cents though to 167.82. Gold uh, continues to show relative price strength as the uh, as the dollar continues to uh, weaken and. Uh, uh, let's see here. Crude oil today. Uh, I think crude oil was down two tenths of a percent to 97.01 a barrel. Mentioned uh, UK-based driller Ensco. That's ticker ESV on yesterday's show, setting up in a uh, pretty nice cup with handle uh, base, trying for a breakout over 58.02. It's trying to break out today. It's uh, trading just above that uh, swing point. It is outperforming, up 68 cents, 1.2 percent to 58.26. So. Uh, according to the technical rules, I follow still easily within uh, buying range here. Uh, Ensco um, looking uh, looking pretty good. Not a whole lot of volume in the stock today, so uh, looks like a, a low volume breakout here, but trading just above a swing point of 58.02. Uh, Ensco's chart is uh, is looking good, and I mentioned uh, Ensco's uh, fundamentals. Uh, the fundamentals of growth prospects in the drilling group uh, overall uh, look uh, look look pretty good here. Ensco uh, annual earnings this year are expected to rise 60 percent from uh, 2011. Next year they're uh, supposed to rise 32% from this year. So 60% growth, 32% growth, um, that's, uh, that's pretty solid. And technically, uh, it does, uh, does look uh, pretty good. Also, uh, services firm Oceaneering, which is OII. Let's check in on uh, Oceaneering here. Uh, still trying for a breakout over 56.45. It uh, look at that. It's right at that swing point, 56.50 right now. So five cents above a uh, the high point in the handle area right here, which again would be 56.50. Uh, Oceaneering outperforming up 1.7 to 5650 good volume in the stock yesterday not so much uh, today so you know these low volume breakouts are are a concern typically when a stock uh, breaks out over a, a swing point you want to see uh, some conviction behind the buying uh, there have been uh, some decent uh, breakouts today that we'll uh, talk about in uh, in just a little bit. Uh, meanwhile, let's check in on shares of Abercrombie and Fitch. Uh, buyers are in that stock today, up 5.1% uh, now to 37.80 on news that they hired Goldman Sachs as an advisor. Uh, the meaning of that, well, it could mean a lot of things, but there has been uh, company has been under pressure from some uh, big shareholders to do something to enhance a shareholder uh, value. One option might be to uh, go public, maybe be taken uh, a private by a private equity firm. So Goldman Sachs hired as an advisor at uh, Abercrombie and Fitch. Uh, this uh, store's problem is just slowing sales growth, uh, a beaten down share price. Uh, so we'll see what the future holds here for Abercrombie, but stock uh, benefiting today after Goldman Sachs was hired as an advisor. Meanwhile, the selling continues in um, Monster, which is M MNST. Do I have that ticker? Yeah, it's MNST, right? Uh, Monster, Monster Beverage, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, this stock has been really been taken apart uh, really since, uh, since the summertime in June. It was a $77, $78 stock. Uh, it is now down to $50.95, down another almost 10% today. Um, you might remember just recently the New York Attorney General launched an inquiry into uh, energy drink makers regarding the marketing of energy drinks and health concerns. Now Senators Dick Durbin and Richard Blumenthal are pressuring the FDA to investigate energy drinks uh, further. This is really weighing on shares of uh, Monster stock just getting taken to the woodshed today down 9.6% to 50.95. Uh, some will say this is on sale. I'm not so sure. All right, folks, stick with me. Coming right back, Breakout Investing on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a 
a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Price Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about technical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Breakout Investing on TFNN daily on TFNN from 3 to 4 Eastern. Uh, I do write the Ultimate Growth Stocks newsletter at TFNN, and if you want to check out 30 days free of Ultimate Growth Stocks, you can do that right on the homepage of TFNN.com. A couple ways to do it, you can click on the Newsletters tab on the uh, front page, uh, then click on Investment Newsletters. Uh, you'll also see promos uh, at various uh, spots on the homepage. Try out Ultimate Growth Stocks. You can find me in the uh, the carousel there. I also do a, a video three days a week at TFNN called Ken Shreve's Market Minute, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So uh, be sure to check out Ultimate Growth Stocks. Uh, I kind of have a unique approach to the market. I have been uh, you know, putting money to work. We are in a confirmed uptrend here. Overall, I'm still optimistic uh, that this market can uh, continue higher into the end of the year. But uh, like I said at the 
the top of the show. Uh, the market, a lot of a lot of good news got priced in quickly here. So uh, to see the Nasdaq and the S and P 500, uh, you know, a normal pullback down to a key support level like the 10-week moving average uh, would not be surprising at all. So at this point, I'm willing to let you know a a a, a 12 percent gain or a 15 percent gain you know come in a little bit i don't like to excessively trade the market constantly moving in and out of stocks the goal is to buy a growth stock at the right time and hold on for a nice gain and sometimes that means uh sitting through normal market pullback so i think if we do get a market pullback here again the market is feeling a little heavy apple is feeling a little heavy uh, will the market sell the news uh, tomorrow on on what the Fed says? I mean, that's a distinct possibility, uh, just like it was a possibility today that Apple would sell the news. A lot of good news has been priced in here pretty quickly. Uh, we did get good breakouts for the uh, major averages uh, last week. The Nasdaq broke out over the... Uh, over the 3100 level, uh, so that's uh, that's bullish, and I still believe that um, I still believe that there's money on the sidelines that wants into this market. Leadership is uh, is is pretty strong right now. Large cap, mid cap, small cap stocks, uh, a lot of stocks out there working. Uh, more importantly, a lot of stocks out there that just aren't showing anything in the way of uh, sell signals. So we got to stay with the trend here. Uh, the trend will be in trouble if we start to see repeated higher volume declines, not only in the major averages, but in leading stocks as, as well. But it's going to take more than one or two days to, uh, to, to cause problems for the uh, uptrend. So uh, too early to be bearish yet, uh, too early for me to think about taking uh, short-term profits here. So uh, we'll see. We'll see how, how stocks uh, end the week. Uh, some nice uh, movers today. Let's take a look at shares of NetSuite. NetSuite is in the same business as Salesforce.com. Pretty much, they're both uh, providers of uh, customer relationship management software, both the uh, cloud computing uh, companies. NetSuite is also involved in enterprise resource planning, ERP uh, software. But uh, NetSuite, have, NetSuite having a, a real solid day today. Nice uh, technical breakout over 59.22. Uh, breakouts have been going on in a, uh, for a while here. So on the one hand, I'm a little wary of stocks that are breaking out in this stage of the game. But if there's uh, if it's a really strong company and there's good volume behind the move, I, th I think some of these names are still uh, buyable. So NetSuite trading uh, just above a swing point of 59 at 22, uh, recently trading around 60 dollars and 24 cents, up almost five percent on the day. So nice uh, nice breakout for. Uh, NetSuite today. I mentioned uh, CRM in a similar business. Uh, I've been talking about CRM recently on the show. It uh, is breaking out over a swing point of uh, 151.97. Call it 152. It is uh, holding slightly above that uh, swing point here, recently trading at 152.87, up 1.4%, and a little bit of volume in uh, Salesforce today as well. So uh, Salesforce and NetSuite uh, working in this market. Let's also take a look at CRM. CVLT, Commvault Systems. Commvault uh, Systems is a uh, you know steady steady grower in, in the market here. It's um, it's not a it's not a huge company. Market cap of 2.4 uh, billion. Uh, yet another stock trying to break out from a cup with handle pattern here. Swing point of 53 uh, 53.80. This is the daily chart. Here's the handle area here. Uh, Commvault running out of a little bit of steam here. You normally don't like to see that on the breakout day, but volume uh, volume is uh, strong in the stock today after hitting an intraday high of 5546 shares of Commvault right now at 5432 5432 and again the uh, the swing point here was 5380 so it's still it's still holding above the swing point but trading near its session low uh, after early strength that is not uh, not great to see on uh, a breakout day we'll look at the weekly chart for Commvault and see kind of a smoother uh, consolidation here, swing point of 5380, uh, trying to break out in heavy volume over that swing point. So we'll see, uh, we'll see if uh, Commvault uh, can succeed here. They do backup and recovery, archival and storage management uh, software. Let's take a look at an uh, interesting name. I think I mentioned Kihu yesterday. They announced uh, they're based in China. There's not much in China working uh, right now. Hang Seng, Shanghai Composite, uh, stuck in you know brutal uh, bear markets as uh, growth, uh, slowing growth in, in China 
are have been a drag on uh, the stock indices uh, over there. Uh, Kihu, another another situation here, looks a little bit like Commvault, early strength and it's uh, it's it's weakening here. So uh, this is another kind of yellow flag out there. When I'm saying the market is feeling a bit uh, heavy, sometimes these breakouts that have a hard time making uh, headway, especially after they've been the breakouts have been going on for several weeks now. It's just an indication that buying demand may be uh, drying up in the near term here. But uh, Kihu, after hitting an intraday high of 25.47, it is at 24.24 uh, 24 now. Still up 1% on the day, but uh, trying for a technical breakout over uh, the swing point of, what was it, 20, 24.88. 24 uh, 88. So it uh, it got uh, it got close, got close to that uh, swing point, but um, is now trading uh, underneath it. Still interesting company here. Uh, annual earnings expected to grow 39 percent uh, this year to 71 cents a share and 52 percent in 2013. 2.85 billion market cap. So it's not a super speculative name. It is speculative though. Triple digit sales growth in recent quarters. Uh, nice earnings growth in recent quarters. Uh, sponsorship isn't great. I mean, you got 93 funds in the stock. Uh, usually, your real institutional quality names are going to have, you know, at least four, five, six hundred uh, funds in there. So, uh, Kihu is on the speculative side, but it does have outstanding fundamentals. Has been showing relative price strength. And again, they just uh, launched a new search engine in China, which has really weighed on shares of uh, Baidu. Remember, Baidu used to be this big, big leader. It has really fallen on uh, tough times. So, it's two completely different looking charts here. Kihu and uh, has the look of an emerging leader, uh, trying to, to break out in heavy volume with good fundamentals, and then Baidu, which has just been hammered mercilessly in uh, in recent months. It's down another 2.6% today to 106.91, uh, coming down to kind of a longer-term support level. Looks like right around 100 bucks uh, a share. So uh, fundamentals still decent at Baidu, but boy, this thing has really been under a lot of a um, lot of selling pressure in in recent months. So, uh, yeah, Kihu is uh, interesting. Again, the ticker there is QIHU, uh, provider of Internet and mobile security products. And, uh, again, just launched a search engine that uh, you know, has brought sellers out in uh, Baidu over competition uh, concerns. Another big, uh, big mover today. Let's check out uh, shares of Panera Bread. Panera Bread, probably my favorite restaurant name now. Uh, big, huge technical breakout for Panera today over a swing point of 164, uh, recently trading at 167.14, up 4.8% on the day. It actually hit an intraday high of 169.49, but there's really, really strong volume here. I don't think this is just retail investors uh, buying today, so this is, uh, this is really a, a breakout that looks like there's some institutional uh, buying here, and I think when you look at all the restaurant names out there uh, in, in the growth stock universe, a name like uh, Chipotle, uh, still lagging here. It's been... It's moved up actually nicely over the past five trading sessions, uh, but still a lot of technical damage uh, done to this stock. Um, and also, you know, Buffalo Wild Wings is a former uh, strong performer. Uh, you know, another name that is working its way higher here uh, towards that $88, $89 uh, price level. So Bio Buffalo Wild Wings has definitely come back to life, but the leader, the outright leader in this uh, group right now has to be, uh, has to be considered uh, Panera. So Panera out, outperforming nicely today and a good, uh, good solid breakout for uh, that name. Talked about shares of uh, Visa yesterday. Visa uh, doing, uh, doing pretty well. A little bit of follow through today uh, for Visa. Shares up another 1.3% to 133.25 after uh, breaking out from a base-on-base uh, -base pattern uh, yesterday. And you can see that base-on-base uh, -base pattern again, by just looking at a, a weekly chart here. You can see the, the first base that started uh, forming here in April, a breakout where the stock rallied less than 20%, settled into a new consolidation here uh, back in uh, July, and it's, uh, it's trying, to, trying to break out over that, uh, that swing point right around 1, 132, I think. So, you know, Visa to me still looks like it's within uh, range here. Uh, not a stock that is showing outright signs of accumulation. Volume was decent in the stock uh, yesterday, uh, not too bad uh, today, but you really like to see a big rush of trading volume at the breakout. Don't see that in Visa, but still uh, showing relative price strength that um, can't be ignored.
Let's check in on shares of Equinix as well. Equinix leases uh, space to uh, companies that want to uh, that have a, that are have a lot of data that they're uh, massaging. This is a big data firm, uh, so companies you know these these big. Uh, warehouses have uh, servers, and uh, that's what Equinix uh, uh, does. And uh, stock has been under a lot of selling pressure over the past four uh, trading sessions. It's down another 1.6 percent today to 186.13, getting pretty close to its 50-day moving average here. Now, this is uh, a stock that's got a lot of institutional support. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to see it uh, find support at its 50-day moving average. Uh, a look at its weekly chart. And we'll see where the 10-week average moving averages for Equinix. And you can see it's pretty much trading right at that line right now. 10-week moving average for Equinix is at uh, 185. So uh, if you're long this stock and you get a convincing break below the 10-week line in heavy volume, uh, you might want to think about taking some um, uh, taking some profits here. But the um, you know, story has not fully played out here yet. But definitely under selling pressure, the last uh, four trading sessions, uh, so Equi Equinix down another 1.5% today to 186.20. Uh, Here's a uh, look at another emerging leader, RealPage. Name I haven't talked about uh, too much on the uh, show here. This is um, a company that provides on-demand software. Anytime you hear on-demand software, this is cloud computing. And instead of buying packaged software, they ac companies access uh, software via the web in the cloud. But RealPage is a provider of on-demand software for the rental housing industry. Just like uh, apartment rentals are, are booming, so are rental houses. Uh, so this is a niche industry that uh, RealPage is uh, really uh, profiting from another company that's uh, expected to grow annual earnings rapidly over the next uh, couple of years, 33%, 33% uh, over the next uh, two years. And, um, you know, it's had a couple of reversals here you see in its uh, daily daily chart. Uh, so it does have some uh, resistance right around that 2650 level. But, you um, Stock is outperforming today up close to 3% to 26.20. Not surprising to see the strength here uh, because of the rally in the, uh, the home, build, home building stocks uh, today. So real, uh, real page uh, is interesting. And why don't we take a look at a weekly chart here for uh, real page. And we'll see that... Um, you know, just uh, kind of respecting the 10-week moving average here. So uh, technical structure that looks uh, pretty good. If it breaks out uh, over resistance at 2650 with uh, with trading volume, uh, this is another stock that uh, that could see higher uh, prices. But that that uh, scenario has not uh, fully played out yet. Uh, couple of other names here before we head into our final break. Polaris Industries. We've talked about Polaris before. Look at this one. Up five days in a row now. Up another 34 cents today to 82.75. Um, had a recent breakout over 79 bucks a share. They make uh, all-terrain uh, vehicles, uh, uh, snowmobiles, recreational utility vehicles, um, <clears throat> and a weekly chart of uh, Polaris You'll see a nice, uh, nice technical breakout here again over that um, over the seventy-nine dollar level uh, last week, uh, but it still has its prior high of eighty-three sixty-three to contend with. And uh, you had a base reset for Polaris. Um, this was uh, back in August two thousand eleven. The, again, the thinking behind a base reset is that enough sellers get shaken out of the stock that it really can't pave the way for uh, for a new uh, bona fide uptrend. And that certainly did happen with uh, Polaris. And as you can see. Here it uh, still could be in the early stages of coming out of a big uh, base here. So uh, ideally, I'd like to see it form a handle area here where it sort of drifts lower in uh, light volume. If it does that, and then a new round of buying takes place, uh, then you'd have yet another technical breakout. So this is a strong stock that is uh, acting uh, pretty well. Taking a look at shares of Under Armour as well. Also showing relative price strength, uh, up 19 cents today to 59.41. But uh, Under Armour is uh, another candidate here for support at the 10-week moving average. This is a very common scenario right now. A lot of weekly charts that look like this after a lot of price strength. Let these stocks come into their 10-week lines. That's uh, normally a pretty good entry point. So 10-week moving average for Under Armour is at 55.60 right now. Stock was recently trading around 59.41. We'll be right back, folks. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? 
now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kate Stalter, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've seen him on Tiger TV, as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor, and now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m., and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator, also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Welcome back, everyone, to Breakout Investing as we head into the close here. Indexes clinging to small gains ahead of the uh, Fed meeting tomorrow where we could hear specifics about uh, QE3. The Dow Jones Industrials right now up close to five points to 13,328. 
The Nasdaq up a little more than five points to 3109, and the S&P 500 up close to two points to 14. 35. Shares of uh, Apple continue to bounce around between negative and positive territory. It is uh, back up near its session high, up $4.91 now, seven tenths of a percent to 665.50. Uh, of course, Apple, uh, the, the talk of the day, the new iPhone, nothing real new, nothing surprising coming out of its uh, press event today, but the Apple iPhone 5 will have a larger screen, lighter, thinner, made uh, completely out of glass and uh, aluminum, and uh, lower price points as well. That uh, I don't know if that was a surprise or not, but uh, price points anywhere from 199 to 299 to 399, uh, and the phone will ship on September 21st. Uh, also likely this year. We didn't hear about it today, but uh, should see an iPad uh, Mini, a smaller, cheaper version of the. Uh, iPad uh, probably uh, coming out before the end of the year in time for uh, Christmas. So that's what's going on. Talked about uh, the outperformance of uh, shares of Facebook today. Still a broken stock, but I uh, thought Mark uh, Zuckerberg did uh, a pretty good job at his uh, talk at TechCrunch yesterday. Shares of uh, Facebook right now um, doing quite well, up 7.7% to $20.92. Uh, still trading underneath its 50-day moving average at 23.43. So we'll see if that uh, you know, that turns out to be a resistance level or not. Uh, don't forget, folks, uh, the Tiger Dollar promotion at TFNN.com. If you purchase Tiger Dollars by September 16th, uh, you'll get uh, free money. You'll get a match of anywhere from 20 to 30% on your money. That's a little higher than normal. Uh, also, you'll get free access to a five-hour uh, live online trading workshop done by Tom O'Brien. Uh, Tom will uh, show people exactly how he trades using a live account. That's going to be Friday, October 5th from 8 to 1 Eastern. So be sure to take advantage of that Tiger Dollar promotion. You can use Tiger Dollars to uh, purchase uh, newsletters at TFNN.com or anything your heart uh, desire. So um, that's a that's a good deal. And uh, earnings reports uh, this week pretty pretty quiet in terms of uh, earnings uh, this week. Uh, all eyes will be on the Fed tomorrow, but uh, we're also going to see numbers from uh, Pier One Imports. Really, the only uh, stock that uh, stuck uh, stuck out to me this week in terms of earnings. Uh, Pier One outperforming today, up 1.7% to 1951 ahead of earnings uh, tomorrow. This is a stock that probably needs to uh, to base for a little while here. Let's take a look at a, a weekly chart for Pier 1 and uh, see if it might be ready to add a little handle area here. And, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is one. You can see it took out its, uh, its recent high of uh, 19 bucks uh, a share, uh, Pier 1 import. So you did have a little breakout here. But sometimes uh, setups like this, they can form what's called a high handle. So it took out the high of the left side of the base here. It forms a high handle by pulling back in light volume. Uh, could get another entry point. Uh, we'll see what earnings from Pier 1 imports uh, look like uh, tomorrow. We do have a, a couple of IPOs uh, coming up next week. Uh, not much this week, but uh, Global, or I should say Globe Immune. That's ticker GBIM. They develop uh, therapeutic drugs for uh, pancreatic cancer and hepatitis. They're offering 5 million shares at uh, 11 to 13. Ticker symbol next week will be GBIM. And also Trulia, a competitor of Zillow.com, on Online residential real estate marketplace offering 6 million shares at 14 to 16. That will trade under the ticker TRLA. Uh, stick around, folks. Tom O'Brien is coming up next from 4 to 6 Eastern. Thanks very much for tuning in to Breakout Investing. I'll be back uh, tomorrow, 3 o'clock uh, Eastern. We'll talk to you then.